Come on, give God a hand down and praise God. Come on, come on, give God a special name. Sometimes that special name is just fine. I give God a praise for him all day. He takes control over our power. We make it into subjection. Our spirit man calls it our faith man. We call it the whole way up. Your hands with me in prayer. Father, we thank you for another Wednesday night, another, another opportunity to come into the house to preach your word on tonight. Plain, simple truth. And I'm asking that you will anoint me, God, to teach this word in its most simplest form. That even those who are unskilled in handling your word will leave you tonight with an understanding. Open our ears and our hearts to be able to hear what the Spirit is saying. Touch our hearts that the seed word will fall into good ground. In Jesus' name we pray, thank God. Amen. On your way back to your seats, give the Lord. <laughs> Tonight, we're going to continue. I, I, we started on last week uh, talking about just the basics of salvation. And, and as I was meditating today, I believe we're going to continue in that vein. Basic teaching. Simple teaching. Teachings that Paul called uh, principal teachings in, in uh, one of the books that he wrote. He said, need be that we go back and teach you the principal things. And I think that's important. Sometimes I, I just believe I heard the Lord say that we've been giving out so much information at such a fast pace. And it sounds good, but how many of you know one scripture read and understood is more valuable than knowing the whole Bible, being able to recite the whole Bible. And so I want to slow down a little bit. I want to slow down. And so we're going to be going back, uh, talking about some things that we've been talking about over the last maybe year, six months. We're going to slow down and teach these things because we need to understand when the boogeyman shows up. I say boogeyman. I use that word. We're going to need to know what we know. You're not going to shout him away. You can't cry the boogie man away. Tears does not dissuade the enemy. This adversary will be on your deathbed still telling you you're going to hell. He, gonna be, he will be there till you take your last breath still accusing you of not being saved. Because the Bible says he's the accuser of the brethren. He wants to convince you. And if you don't know that you are He'll convince you that you're not. And sometimes, we talked a little bit about Job last week on how calamity came one after the other after the other. After the other one, he lost all those everything. His family, all of his finances, his riches, his animals. But he knew God. And the Bible said he did not curse God. See, if you don't know what you know, you'll get in a tight and start asking silly questions like, why me? I said silly because... People ask those kinds of questions who think that they're worthy. Right. Uh -huh. When people are on a work system and I'm out working him yeah. because I'm here every Wednesday and he missed every other Wednesday. And I know I'm, I do more Sundays than him. Yeah. And, and, and I'm more faithful than him. And why am I going through and he's not? That's a work system. That's what works will do for you. Right. Yeah. And, and then you'll, you'll feel justified in asking God a question like that. Yeah. Why me? When the Bible said, uh, uh, Jesus asked the man, said, why call him not me good? Uh, he said, that ain't nothing good. That's right. Ain't nothing good. Mm -hmm. None. No good. Ain't none of us good in ourselves. Right. And we need to understand that because bad things happen to good people. Right. Bad things happen to faithful people. Right. Calamity and sickness and death come into saints' family lives. Faithful people. And fa I'm talking about faithful folk who had church every time the doors open. And you got to know what you know when these times come. Because if not, especially if you got a, a somebody close to you who really don't trust the Lord. That's why I've been, over the last month, you guys have known my teaching in my senior leadership development that God had told me to bring the husbands and the wives up together. Because what's happening is, 
is when you begin to bring the husband up and bring his wife down, but Dr. Shalita got to go where the other way to go. God can't send him somewhere that's going to kill her. Because where he goes, she got to go. And the same fire, because he's seasoned, will refine him and destroy her. Same fire. Because see, when you know what you know, you're going to go through, it's going to be hard, but we'll come out more refined. That, that's what calamity does to a, a strong person. You would come out pure old, we burn off. But, but if the wife or the husband is on a different level, Job's wife said, curse God. They were on different levels. That's right, that's right. She said, why don't you curse God? Uh -huh. She wasn't on the same level. You see that now? Yeah. That, that, that's why you, you got to have people on the same level with you so that when you're going through, you don't have people accusing you. Come on. Right. I know why they're going on in that. I, I know why they're going on. I know. I know, <laughs> I, I, I know why they're going on in that. Right. You don't know nothing. Thank you, Lord. God ain't told you that. Right. You, you, God ain't told you that. If God don't directly tell you why somebody's going through, don't say anything about that. Because with the same judgment you judge, you shall be judged. Right. Be careful, be careful. Unless God directly tell you that's why they going through that, don't say nothing. Because you don't know. You, you don't know. You, you, don't, you don't really know. You're just saying that. Because if God dealt with anybody in here on their works, all of us will be messed up. Everybody in here. Not all of us, y'all. In ourselves. That's why we have to be clothed. In the righteousness of Jesus. So that's where we are. We're going to be dealing with some principal teaching where we're going to go back and just deal with some things. And we're going to continue tonight. Y'all pray for the families of all the murder victims. Y'all see all the shootings? Yes. Young children shooting children. Y'all pray for those families. But God told me this. He said, you can check their background. I guarantee you, almost none of them have a church history. I don't know any of those young people, but I bet you, if you go back and check their raising and the rearing, I bet you they were not made to go to church. And I bet you they had the privilege of staying home. You got your sons and daughters in the right place. Amen. You better hear me now. You better hear me now. I know they don't want to come all the time, but get them in this house. It does change your thinking. It does change your nature. It does change. It is proven with spark, with less violence, with more edge. Come on, somebody. We live better lives as Christians. They got data to prove that. And why wouldn't you want your children to have a successful life? And God just spoke that to me. Now, I have gone back and researched this, but God told me on the way here. He said, you go back and look at their background, almost all of them have no knowledge of God. So shame on the boys, but shame on their parents. Yes. Shame on the people that raised them. Yes. You know, we get out the church, we act a little crazy. You know, we we do a little folks that don't fight, we don't, we don't kill them. We ain't violent like that. Amen. That's a whole different nation. Yes. You shoot folk, man. God, oh. So y'all pray for those families. Amen. Yes. Let, let, let's, let's, let's dive into this. Tonight we're going to continue talking about salvation. Give you a quick definition of salvation. Now, we talked about this on last, last week. Salvation means deliverance by the grace of God. When you see grace, that means something you did not earn is given to you freely. Grace is an empowerment. It also means empowerment. So when you see the word grace, that's something that God gives you that you cannot earn. Not only did not earn, but you cannot earn grace. So deliver, deliverance, salvation, deliverance, by the grace of God, not because you deserve it, not because of your family, not because of your background, but it's delivered by the grace of God from eternal punishment for sin. That's an eternal punishment for sin. That's going to be eternal. That's called the second death. That's eternal separation from God. That's hell. We don't talk about it much in the day church, but hell is real. There's accounts in the Bible with people in hell wanting to come out of hell. Ask for some water from, from down there. Yeah. One man was so conscious about his experience in hell, he said, go back and tell my brothers. Yeah. Don't come to this place. Yeah, so you're not in hell dead, you're in hell conscious. Right. And you're separated from God. 
We don't want to go there. But salvation delivers us from that eternal punishment. That's the purpose of salvation. It delivers us from that eternal punishment, which is granted, granted to those who accept by faith, repentance, and faith in Christ and his work. So when we accept by faith Christ and his works, we receive the gift of salvation. When we accept by faith, when we accept by faith, salvation we established last week is only by faith alone. Salvation, I'm going to give you some scriptures to back this up. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise because I'm going to show you in the scripture. Salvation, justification, sanctification, righteousness is only by faith alone. That's the only system God has for salvation. Put Romans 10 up real quick on the board. I think that's Romans 10 and 1. Romans 10. Romans, I didn't give you that one. Romans 10 and 1. Yeah. I didn't give you that one, but I want to hear it real quick because it just fell in my spirit. Now watch this now. This is what's going on. A lot, a lot of stuff going on now. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. He said, I bear the record that they have a zeal of God. They're working, doing a lot of church stuff. They come to church on Wednesday. They come to church on Sundays. Brethren, my heart's desire. This is Paul writing about his fellow people. Brethren, my heart's desire. And he said, I'm praying to God for Israel that they might be saved. For they, I bear the record that they have a zeal of God. They're working. They clean the church on their clean day. They cut the grass, they pay the tithe, they pay the offering, they, 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 they try to help the pastor, they hear on Wednesdays and Sunday, and they on the high town board. Zeal is work. They have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. You can be working going in the wrong direction. You can be making good times at work. We're making uh, 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 seven miles an hour. We left home at 8 o'clock, and it's just 9 o'clock, and we're already seven miles up the road. Yeah, but the only problem is Mobile is west. Yeah. And, and you're going to eat, you're making good time with the wrong direction. So that's what he said right there. He said, I bear that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Go to three. He said, for they be ignorant of God's righteousness. See, God has a righteousness. And a lot of people are ignorant of God's righteousness. God's righteousness is salvation by faith alone. So they were working in the church, working around the church, had good intentions, but they were ignorant of God's righteousness. And this is really the only righteousness that counts. Amen. It doesn't matter what I think or Emily Leon's think. Right. It don't even matter what you rule and else think. It's one righteousness, and that's God's righteousness. Right. And they're going about, pay attention, yeah. to establish their own righteousness. Right. They, they keep adding stuff and coming up with stuff. But that's actually a rebellion. Right. Mm. All right. Because see, God has already said that Abraham believed God and it was accounted of them as righteousness. Right. So, so God has already established a system of righteousness that he accepts. Right. And so though it may seem noble, what you got to do is take a look. It may seem like more is better, but more is actually a rebellion. Right. Because when you don't do like God said, you're not submitting to God. See, not submitting themselves unto the righteousness of God. So God said, faith, righteousness is by faith alone. And folk is still coming up their own righteousness, telling you you got to stop, take off, put on, do it, don't let it fool you, make up, pay, and let everybody check about that junk. Right, right, right. Right. by salvation. Now, when we get saved, the Holy Spirit is going to clean us up. That's right. The Holy Spirit is going to tell us to put on some things and take off some things. It's going to tell you to loosen up some things and tighten up some things. Come on, somebody. It's going to tell you the place to stop going and to start going. That's after salvation. Right. That's, that's a work that's after salvation. You understand? We got people trying to do that before salvation. And which all that does really is teach people how to live righteous in front of church folk. So when I'm with my Christian brother, I act all pious, but when I'm with my on the job, I'm cussing like a sailor. 
Because you're not delivered, you're performing. And, and, and if I don't teach you about God and how to reference God and not me, folks will be hiding from the pastor. But you don't have to hide from me. You, 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 when you really know what you're standing on, you can live one life. Right. right. One consistent life. I listen to it. I don't go by. It, it's only one me. I'm, I'm, I cut up all the time everywhere I go. I'm free. I'm not bound. I got liberty. You can't bound me up. I listen to what I want. I go with. You can't bound me up. I, see, I know I'm saved by grace through faith. I know that my salvation has nothing to do with my work. You can't bound me up. You can come and tell me you ain't saved. Saved folk don't do that. Preachers don't say that. Them little Sunday school words be saying behind the pulpit. Oh, I'm fully on you. I'm saved and going to the same heaven you going to. You can't even miss that. I know what I'm talking about. I, I, I know it now. I know it. Don't let nobody fool you with that. Don't let them pull you off to the side and understand the thing. Y'all look at that young pastor, young preacher. Yeah. That boy said, "Oh, y'all can hear that." That boy, that boy, that boy. That boy. <laughs> no, 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 I, I, I'm giving you scripture. That's right. And you ask him, you show me in the Bible yeah. that tell me to tear it for the Holy Ghost. I want somebody. What about ever show me that? Though they keep telling me that, but they won't ever show me that in the Bible. Not in that context. Yes, sir. It's in there, but not in that context. <laughs> Who's going to call on the name of the Lord shall be saved? That's in there, but that wasn't said. <laughs> That's not what they're talking about. That's man that went out and established their what? Own righteousness. And then they put all that weight on us. I still call on Jesus. But not for the purpose of receiving the Holy Ghost. I got that through faith. I got that through grace by faith in Jesus Christ. That was a gift. Through the grace of God is why I got saved. Amen. Y'all ready? Amen. Give God a hand up pray for us. Here, pray. <laughs> so last listen. We, we established that salvation by faith apart from Romans 3 and 28. Let's go. Romans 3. Thank all y'all for being here tonight. Amen. Therefore, we conclude just at the end of the matter. No more discussion about this. The apostolic, power of Peter, we all got together with the Holy Ghost in the midst. The Bible said no other foundation can any man lay except Jesus Christ and the foundation of the apostles. So it ain't nothing else to do on this foundation now. Right. Ain't no more writings to be done about salvation. This is the conclusion. Yeah. That man is justified, that means declared righteous, saved by Amen. without Words, deeds of the law. Point blank. Right. Paul said, close mouth. Ain't no more to add to this. There's no more discussion about this. Conclusion. A man, excuse me, y'all, is justified. Yeah. Justified is a legal term. That means I've been found not guilty. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. I've been absolved. The me, I didn't do it. Right. Because we did do it. We, we, we're justified. That's us on the picture. That's us. That's us. That's us. That's us. That's us. That's us. We did do it. But Jesus Christ stood before the judge on my behalf. Right. And that's what that faith is. That man is justified by faith. Let's go on. Y'all got that? Romans 5 and 1. Watch this. Therefore, being justified, there you go again. How you justified? We have peace with God. God is not angry with you. Right. That ought to set you free. Yes. Even when you messed up, went back into the world, backslid, watch that whole video that popped up on your timeline, <laughs> and everything in you told you to close it. God is still not mad at you. God is at peace with you. Listen to me now. You need to understand this. If you don't understand it, when you mess up, you're going to stop coming to church. And that's why people stop coming to church. God would be very bipolar. If every time one of us mess up, God get angry. You know how many folks in this world? Jesus. There's almost six billion people in the world. Angry, not angry, angry, not angry. All they know God is angry, not angry. Come on, this is God we're talking about. Mad with me, mad with you, mad with you, mad with you, mad with you, heck with you, mad with you. That, that's, that, that, that's, that's schizophrenia. Yes. I got peace with God. Yeah. Because all of my sin debt has 
been paid. I'm going to show you a scripture in the back, the now, and the future. And, 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 and even our legal system said that when a man is found not guilty, you can't retry me. Why? You, you can't take me back to trial for the same thing that I've already been judged on. So justified by faith, we have peace with God. Not because of your good work through our Lord Jesus Christ. The work that Jesus did is why you got peace with God. That work that you put your faith in will give you peace with God. You got it? Yeah. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. We're going to know something today. Amen. People scared to teach this because they think that saved by grace gives people a license to sin. They think that if you... If you don't put a lot of restraints and restrictions on people, they think that people are going to run wild. But that's not true. People run wild because they don't know what happened with them at salvation. Right. Information is powerful. When you know that when you got saved, you were born again. You became a new creation. You got a new nature. God gave you power over sin. God sealed you with his Holy Spirit. Man, it's this kind of information that when the devil knocks on the door, you can tell him, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. <laughs> Stuff. Not out there, uh, uh, uh. All these new rituals they coming up with. Got all kinds of and, and, and a lot of stuff is good, but 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 you know, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff is not unnecessary. But anyway, we'll be that night. So Ephesians 2 and 8, for by grace, unmerited favor, you cannot earn it. It's free. You're saved through what you believe. See it right there? Not of yourselves. This is nothing you did. It's a gift. Jesus was a gift. God sent his only son as a gift to the world. It's a gift of God. Can I see nine? Not of works and go again. See, it, it can't be works and grace. The two, it, what's that word? Optimal Two things that can't exist simultaneously. It's an oxymoron. You can't have grace and works. Right. You, you can't have it. So when God said that word grace, that means all your works are out of it. Right. Not of works. Now this is what I like. Let's any man should boast. You would have bragging rights. Ooh, I, ooh, I, I stayed on the for three weeks. <laughs> Boasting. Man, I got this stuff they get out now. All that foolishness y'all be hearing, that foolishness they can say something. I'll be listening to y'all ignorant. Yeah. That's, not a, that's not an offensive term. Ignorant means unknowing. Right. I, I'm not talking about offensive ignorant. I'm talking about a lack of knowledge ignorant. That's a lack of knowledge. That's some people who God is, 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 is sending the truth through his last day prophet and folk won't change. Yeah. But people are hungry for the truth. Yeah. Right. Nobody want to be bound up. Right. Nobody want to live in bondage. People want to be free. Right. But it's just that our recipes have not been setting people free. Yeah. <laughs> but, but through this you can be set free because we're totally dependent on God. Y'all got that? Amen. So that faith of what we believe is in the birth, pay attention now, life, death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. All those scriptures I just showed you about believing. This is what we believe. That faith I told you about, saved by grace through faith, salvation is by faith and not of works. All that, this is what that faith is in. This is what we believe. Faith always has to have an object. Right. I got faith, okay, but faith for what? Faith for what? What's your faith in? Mm -hmm. I believe in God. What's, your, what's, your, what's the object of your faith? Amen. Your faith, I'm gonna, what you believe in God for? Your faith is always Jesus. You can be believing for a promotion, a husband, or a million dollars. Don't put your eyes on to what you believe. Come on, man. This is the trick of the devil. I'm believing God. I'm believing God. I'm standing up. Your, your, your faith is always in Jesus. Yes, Jesus is always the focal point. I don't care what the manifestation you expected, but my faith never leaves the cross. Right. Say something. Say something. But I believe in Jesus. He's the author and the finisher yes. of my faith. Yes. I'm believing God for a house, but I'm watching Jesus. Oh, yes. I'm believing God for a breakthrough. My faith is in Jesus. Yes. Not in my job, not in my blood I made. I believe Jesus is my provider. Yes. Should the devil get you 
take your eyes off of Jesus. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Keep on working. Keep on going. Keep on going. Keep on going. Let me show you a shortcut. Put your faith in Jesus. Yeah. So watch this now. So that's why all of my faith, all that believe is on John 3 and 36. John 3 and 36. John 3 and 36. Watch what it says. He that believeth on the Son, this, see that remember I told you that's believing our faith? Yeah. That when he said believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. Who will put their faith in Jesus Christ? Now that faith is not just Jesus walked the earth, not it's in his birth. Right. We believe that he was born through the, the, the Holy Ghost lighting upon his mother, Mary. Right. Who said, How can this be? I never slept with a man. Right. The angel told her, The Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. Right. And that which shall be in you shall be of the Holy Ghost. And Jesus was not conceived of a man's seed like we were. He was carried by a woman. You got to believe that. Amen. This is what our faith is in. Now, this is what your faith is in. In his life. Yeah. That he lived a perfect life for three years on this earth. Yeah. With no sin and no blemish. This is what our faith is in. On his death on the cross. Jesus died on that cross. And on that cross, he took everybody's sins yeah. upon himself. Yeah. Not only did he take the sins and die with it, he got up and rose again. That's what we believe. That's what our faith is in. Y'all yes. understand that? Amen. But when you believe in that, when you accept that as fact and believe in that, that Jesus was born, God said his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him shall be saved. And you believe that he came for you and took your sins on the cross and died. And God showed him the proof by raising him again. You believe that. When you believe that, it's what you believe that saves you. It's what you believe that empowers you. It's what you know that gives you power to walk out of sin. Yes, Lord. Jesus as the Son of God, He was Christ, the anointed one. Luke 1 and 34. Luke 1 and 34. Look at that. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be seeing I know not a man? 35. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. You got but this is his birth. Come upon thee in the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. That's his birth. You gotta believe that. Luke 4 and 18. This is not what it says. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is the anointed one. Jesus is the Christ. Christos, he's the anointed one. The Spirit of God is upon me. He has anointed me. you got to believe that Jesus was sent from this work. Nobody else could do it. Nobody else was sent to do it. we got to believe that the angel has said that in the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the doctrine to the poor, sent me to, to, to heal the brokenhearted, preach the living of the captive, recover the sight of the blind, and to set, uh, and to set, the pre and pre the acceptable year of the Lord. Yes, sir. You gotta believe that that was his purpose. He was anointed to do this. Nobody else could do it, right? right. Amen. His death on the cross, 1 John 2 and 2. 1 John 2 and 2. And he is the propitiation for our sins. Yes. Propitiation, what, what is that? What do you mean he's but Christ was the peace offering? Offered to God. Christ offered himself as the peace offering. That's why one scripture read said that, that, uh, that, that we have peace with God. How can us be not perfect with the Holy God? How can God be at peace with us? Because Christ was our peace offering. He was our propitiation. For what? For our sins. And not only ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. That's what we believe. We believe that Christ was the propitiation, he was the sin offering, yes. offered to God for not only us, but for the sins of the whole world. And anybody who will believe this can be saved. Yes. He's the peace offering, y'all got that? Yes. First Peter 3 and 18. First Peter 3 and 18. Listen, Christ also have <laughs> how many times? Once. Suffered for sins. Uh -huh. 
the just Christ for the unjust us. Yes. That he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. So Christ has how many times? Once. There is nothing else you can do about your sins. No. Amen. There's nothing you can do to put God more on your side. But except you got Christ suffered for sin once. In the Old Testament, the priest had to offer sacrifice after sacrifice after sacrifice after sacrifice for sin. Christ came, offered himself one time for sin. That's it, y'all. You can't do it. Don't go to God trying to offer God nothing for your sin. You can't fast to get out your sins. You can't do nothing for your sins with God but accept the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Y'all believe that? Amen. Do you really believe that? Amen. Christ already suffered. His sins already been paid for. There's, there's nothing else for sin to be done. God accepted Jesus Christ. Pay attention. Pay attention. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Watch this. For he has made him, Christ, to be seen for us. So this is called in the Bible the great exchange. Christ knew no sin. Remember I told you he was perfect? That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So this is what Christ did on the cross. Now pay attention. He made him. So he took all of my sins and put them on Christ on the cross. Like he took off Christ's robe and wrapped this perfect righteous robe around me. It's called the great exchange. Christ took my sins and wrapped me in his righteousness. Why did he do that? Because we can't go to God. God is perfect. He's holy. God cannot be in the presence of sin. Right. So the only reason we can go to God and be with God and worship and fellowship with God is we have to be perfect. But the reason we can still go now to the Holy of Holies is because we're clothed in Christ's perfect righteousness. Right. Oh, shit. This thing made me want to run, y'all. Y'all let not get no big deal. Listen here. When God is dealing with you, he's dealing with you through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. God ain't mad at you. The devil wants you to thank God mad at you. He wants you to thank God that left you. He wants you to thank you that lost your salvation. The Bible says eternal life, life that lasts forever. Eternal life really means God gave you his life. He made him to be sin for us. Christ knew no sin. That's why God could accept Christ as a sacrifice. He did that that we may be made the righteousness of God. God loved us. He did all that because he wanted a relationship with us. He put my sins on Christ on that cross. That's why Christ had to get treated so bad. That's the penalty for sin. It was beaten, spilled, mocked, pissed in the side, beat up, made a mockery out of thorns on it. He did all that for me. My sins have been paid for. He did that one time. There remained it. The Bible said no more sacrifice for sin. Ain't nothing else God will accept for sin but the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. You can't do nothing to satisfy God's righteous demand for yourself. Because if we could, we would. And if God did do that, watch this, then you got two saviors. Because a savior is anything that saved you. And if your works participated in your salvation, then your works are part of your Savior. And then what Jesus did, said, so you got two saviors. I only got one Savior. Amen. I'm only saved because of the work of Jesus Christ. Yes. That's why the Bible says, not of works, let's hear the man's devotion. The righteousness of God is apart from the law. I got one Savior. The only reason I'm saved is because my faith is in Jesus Christ alone. And because I'm saved, I do good works. Yes, because I'm saved, I stop doing a lot of things. Yes, 
Because I'm saved, some places I don't go. But I don't do that to get saved. I do that as a result of my salvation. I, 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 I stopped smoking, getting high, chasing women, drinking, alcohol, and cussing and beating up folk. I stopped a lot of things. I'm lying, cheating. But I didn't do that to get saved. I did that because when I got saved, the Bible said he sealed me with his spirit. He gave me the earnings of the spirit. He gave me the first deposits of the spirit in me. Right. So I got his spirit, and that spirit in me gave me power to stop smoking dope. Yeah. That spirit gave me power to be faithful in one moment. Yeah. That spirit gave me power to pay my creditors, my debt. It gave me power to not get myself in over my head trying to attract fucking debt. It gives me power to live within boundaries. It gives me power to say that doesn't look good, Pastor. You don't need to go back. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Well, it ain't no sin. Yeah, but some things say just don't need to be yeah. needed. Yeah. 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 To some things, you got to let the Holy Ghost guide you. Paul said that, 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 that all things are expedient to me, but all things are not good for me. Pay attention. What he was saying is, other thing is not a sin. But that's something the Holy Ghost ought to tell you not to put on. No, no, no. <laughs> that's what Paul said. He said, something the Holy Ghost forbid me to do. It ain't a sin. But because the Spirit in me, he said, Pastor, you don't need to go there. That don't look good. That's right. Well, ain't nothing wrong with it. Ain't nothing wrong with a lot of things. Uh -huh. But something is not becoming of a saint. Y'all understand that? Yeah. All right, give God a hand time to pray for that. Yeah. All right, go ahead, 10 Corinthians 5 to 1. Here's the rest of 1 Corinthians 15, 17. It is a good teaching? Yes, it is. 15, this, we're going to learn something. And Christ, if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, in vain, and you are yet in your sin. That's why a part of your belief, you got to believe that Christ got up in three days. Yeah. You got to believe. So when the Bible says, believe in me, he's talking about the whole package of Jesus Christ. He's talking about the birth, the life, the death, and the resurrection. And so it said, believe in me, but it's talking about the whole package. And that's what I'm going through right here now, the package. You got to believe he got up. Because if he didn't get up, then he was defeated. If he didn't get up, then Christ God didn't accept the sacrifice. So you got to believe that in three days, and if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain, what you believe in? You're yet in your sins. Right. But we know that he got up. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, 15, what was that? Go, go down to 19. No, let, let's jump over to Romans 4 and 25. Right. Romans 4 and 25. Who will deliver Christ for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Yes. Christ was delivered to the cross for our sins. Yes. And he was raised again yes. for our justification so that we can be declared righteous. Y'all got that now? Yes. That's salvation. Isn't that an awesome picture? Yes. So if we if we repent, repentance is a change of mind. Yes. It's a change of attitude about your life. The Holy Spirit brings you to that place. You bring you to that place where you begin to look at yourself and say, you know, this life is not worth it. Yeah. You bring you to a place where you just can't stand yourself where you are. Yeah. You bring you to a place where you say, yeah, I know I'm, 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 I'm better than this. Yeah. You bring you to a place where you God is sorry. Yeah. And you just look. It, it's not a change of direction like people teach. Uh -huh. It's really a change of mind. Yeah. And a change of mind causes me to change direction. Yeah. Yeah. The Holy Ghost will bring you to a place of repentance. And then God will send somebody to share the gospel with you. Yeah, right. And the Bible says, when you hear the gospel of your salvation, you believe. believe. So God will send somebody with a teacher like this. Yes, Lord. Who somebody listening on Facebook Live or, yes. or another thing, you know, what's that called? Another thing. Huh? Instagram. Instagram. And, and, and some young person is listening because they see all the killing going on. And they're tired of gang banging. They, they're tired of getting high. They're tired of running the street. And, 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 and instead of y'all going out there and telling them what they need to do, you tell them about Jesus Christ. That he died for your sins. And you get the nature of those young people saying, then they stop killing each other. 
That, that's how this puzzle works. And you keep them in the church. So keep the children in the church. Keep the children in the church. I know they don't want to come every week, but they need to be in church. They'll thank you later. And you will thank them later. Keep them in the house. Amen. So, so y'all got that? So, so watch this now. I gotta speed up. I got about 15 more minutes. What happens when we're saying? Okay, Romans 10, 9, and 10. Romans 10, 9, and 10. The devil is a lie. Amen. So after hearing the gospel about what I told you, Jesus Christ was born through Mary without knowing a man, lived a perfect life in this world. Jesus went on the cross. Took on the sins of the whole world, all these scriptures I just showed you. But then he got up again with all power in his hand. Yes. You share that testimony with somebody. Then they believe that. Because the Holy Ghost has already left to protect us. Right. They're already tired of what they are. They're tired of living like that. You share the gospel. Then Romans 10, 9 said, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth uh -huh. the, Lord. the Lord, Jesus, I confess you, my Lord. Yes. And shall believe in thine heart. I believe that you was Christ. I believe that you walked this earth first. I, I believe in my heart that you took my sins on the cross. And I believe in my heart that you rose again on the third day. If you confess him as your Lord and believe it in your heart that God had raised him from the dead, I believe you got up, Jesus. Yes. Thou shalt be and take the rest of that jump. Back to that demonic spirit that will lead you in the church. You, know, you, you take the rest of that false teaching back to where it comes from. That's what the God is And that's what we teach. Because that's all the Bible says. He said it's by faith. It's by faith and faith alone. Apart from the word, we're justified because of Christ's words. I believe. He heard. I believe I want to be saved. I confess it. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. What you believe is what brings you to, into righteousness. It's not what you do with the heart. This is an inward man. This is not a head thing. This is, I truly believe. I'm convicted in my heart. I'm convicted in my heart. And, 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 and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And that God. Basic teaching. Basic teaching. Basic teaching. Because so many people want to be saved, yeah. but don't know how. Right. We got so many different salvation formulas. Yeah. One church telling you this. Yeah. The other down the block telling you this. Yeah. The other yeah. around the corner say you can't wear pants. Yeah. The other say you can wear lipstick, but it can't be red. Yeah. The other say faint up politics. Yeah. All this junk. All, all this junk. Yeah. All this junk, and we wonder why the football stadium full and the church empty because folks know what the football game looks like. We're the only ones who Come on, wow. 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 But now you know the truth. Yes, Don't teach me all that junk. Thank you, Jesus. You tell me, we said that junk, y'all teach me. Yeah. I'm already on attack. Tell me, he said that junk yeah. and, and, and false doctrine right. because there's only one truth. Y'all know that. The truth is not relative. The truth is not what fits the moment. God was not confused when he said about salvation. Ooh, yeah. God only had one plan of salvation, y'all. Yes. And somebody wrong. Let God be true. Amen. And every man be a liar. In other words, what he's saying is, I don't care if 99% of the world said one way and God, the 1% said the other, God is right. Popular opinion don't mean you're right against God. I don't care how many folks believe it. I don't care how long they taught it. I just gave you scripture in context. I didn't manipulate it. I didn't change it. I just gave you scripture in context. That when you believe that, what happens when you get saved real quick? What happens when you, when you say, well, forgive of all our sins. Delivered from God's condemnation and eternal punishment of hell. Hebrews 10 and 12. Hebrews 10 and 12. Watch this. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins, Christ on that cross, one sacrifice, how long? It is over. The sin problem has been solved. Thank you, Lord. The sin problem has been solved. The sin problem has been 
God, he offered one sacrifice forever. Past, present, and future. The sin problem has been solved. You just need to believe in the remedy that God gave. This man talked about Jesus after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever. Sat down. He said, this is a wrap. I'm done with this. Believe in me, I'll take care of your sins. Right. Sit down. Right here. Signify a position of authority. Accomplishment on the right hand. We get that to my right hand man. The one we trusted. He sit down on the right hand of God. Because it's done. Y'all got that? Ain't nothing else you can offer God for sin. Ain't nothing else you can do for sin. Ain't nothing else you can do about sin. He already died once and for all. He sacrificed and he sat down cheering y'all tripping. Jesus is cheering. Romans 5 and 1. Y'all praying for me? Amen. Therefore, being justified by faith, declared right to. This is what happens when you get saved. What happens when you get saved? Your sins get forgiven. Yep. You got peace with God. You see it? Y'all see that? You're justified by faith, by what you believe. All that I told you. That's why you're saved. If you start thinking you're saved because your work, what's you going to do tomorrow when you go off on somebody? What you gonna do when that man cuts you off a traffic and almost hit you and your baby in that car? Come on, man. <laughs> all right. If you saved by work, then all that just ran through your mind ain't holy. <laughs> that, that, that wasn't holy, that. Well, that wasn't holy, well. And, and so, if you saved by your works, it just means you ain't saved no more. Amen. Because if a man look and desire, he already said, so your thoughts are sin. So right now you ain't saved. That's why you can't be saved by work. That's right. Why do your boss up in your face? You start patting your head like that. All that money you had that's paying on. That's why we can't be saved by work. Right. We're too fickle. Now we don't go out and tell you sin. But, but, but we can't be saved by work, y'all, because we make too many mistakes. Yeah. And then, so you gotta keep on coming back to the altar? Well, if you got it by tearing, then when you lose it, if you say you lose it, then you got to come back and we on this day almost all day, we can't work. Or do you wait till you get out of work and come back and get it back? Or do you wait till Sunday to come back and get it back? It makes no sense. It makes no sense. Or do you just pull on the side of the road when you lost that and get it back? That's why it can't be a word. Y'all get this? I'm not making a mockery of it. That's why it cannot be a word. We too messed up. Right. We don't sin. We don't advocate sin. We believe that a man ought to be sanctified. Continue to be clean and be more like God. That's what we believe. But we got some messed up stuff still in us. Oh, yes, oh, yeah, we do. Oh, yes, oh, yes we do. Oh, yes, and some of y'all know amen. <laughs> some of you can't look up. All right. <laughs> you look up, man. I'm not looking at you. Romans 8 and 1. Romans 8 and 1. There is therefore no, no. no condemnation to them which are in Christ. Why? Because you're in Christ. Right. It was never contingent upon what you did for God or what Christ did on your behalf. Right. It's contingent upon not what you did for God, right. but what Christ did on your behalf and offered himself to God. That's why when the devil accused me, you're going to be a pastor. And, and, and that's what's in your head right now. I said, devil, you can't condemn me. Because my, my relationship with God is not based on work. It's based on what I believe. And, and, now, now go play with somebody else. Go, go play with somebody else. Go, go play with somebody who don't understand. And just to run into one day I was in Walmart. And, and this, this Christian, I know, they were so down. I mean, I just, and I was concerned about it. When I asked the Lord, I said, what's wrong with you know, that Christian? And, and he, he said, they, they don't work salvation. They had messed up. And because they had messed up, when you own work, you walk around with a spirit of cloud of condemnation. Right. That's right. When you mess up. You, people who own work, when they mess up, they stop coming to church. Uh -huh. 
when they mess up, they sit on the front row, but this Sunday, all the way in the back. Yeah. You ain't no hypocrite because you come to church when you mess up. Right. You just understand why you sing. Yeah. Why? Who said you got to stop coming to church? Oh, yeah. anyway, who said you can't pray? Because I was just letting everything that had breath praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. I can come up here and clap. Oh, yeah. Ain't no hypocrite. Look at it. Dancing all of them. Man, I'm saved, man. I messed up. God forgive me. I ain't got to lose my praise. I ain't got to stop coming to church. I ain't got to sit in the back. I messed up. God forgive me, Jesus. Forgive me, Lord. I'm sorry. I'm going to come back and sit where I normally sit. I'm going to come back and say what I normally say. And I'm going to turn my praise up this song. I'm going to let the devil know that I know I'm saved. I know I'm saved. I'm saved. And for say you, you can't have God forgive me if you have no plan of abandonment. Oh, right. That's right. And it's just ask God forgive me if you have no plan to stop. Right. He said, ask and forsake. Right. You got a plan on stop. Now don't play with God. Right. The, 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 don't play with the plan with yourself. Oh, right. with yourself. Right. Confess and forsake. Yeah. Lord, I don't plan on doing this anymore. Yeah. I got weak. Some, some folks say, men, you know, they, when he ain't saved, you wouldn't have did that. Man. Well, that ain't true. Yeah. <laughs> because me and my wife were dating. Don't tell everybody this. Y'all better tell nobody. Okay. <laughs> I was saved and preaching. My wife lived in Stockton. I was living in Baby Heaven. I left home saying, I'm going to try this woman tonight. <laughs> If he saved, he wouldn't have did that. That's a lie. That's a lie. I was saved and preached. And came up and put my song on. Tonight is the night. Make me your woman. That ain't true. I was on the back side and picked it back up. A man will try you saved, sanctified, and so don't you let nobody tell you that lie. A man will try you. I know I was saved. I was going to baptize intentionally. Now you tell him I said. But thank God, the woman of God said, you got to get up out of here.
his work that covers me. Amen. When you get saved, real quick, I got five minutes. Keep yourself in healthy situations. You won't worry about that. Amen. Don't get yourself in places alone. Make yourself spiritual. Now keep yourself. Keep yourself. Amen. You will fall. You will fall. Real quick, I got to go. John 14, 16, real quick. John 14, 16. I want y'all to go back and listen to this on Facebook. Don't get some teaching here. This is Jesus. He said, I pray the Father, he shall give you another comfort that he may abide <laughs> with you forever. Yes, sir. 18, 16, verse. Even the 17, even the spirit of truth, the world cannot receive because it sees him not. Neither knoweth him, but, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be. Amen. This is the Holy Spirit of promise. Jesus is promising that he's going to send the Holy Spirit, right? right? I will not leave you comfortable. I will come to you. Now watch what happens now in, 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 in 2 Corinthians 1 22. In my closing, 2 Corinthians 1 and 22. Watch this. Who has also sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts when we believe. You got that? You got the Spirit, the earnest of the Spirit. That's the down payment. That's a security deposit. So that when He comes, the wrath will come. Because you have been sealed, you go. Amen? 2 Corinthians 5 and 5. 2 Corinthians 5 and 5. Watch this. Now he that hath wrought for us the self same thing is God, who also hath given us the earnest of the Spirit. Y'all see it? Right. Now you all feel better knowing you got the Spirit. You still by the Spirit. Ephesians 1 and 13. What happened when you get saved? Right. Ephesians 1 and 13. I'm, I'm, I'm going to clarify it for you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to clarify so you can lead your children to Christ. In whom. Ye also trusted. Yeah. Put your faith in, remember? Yeah. When? After you heard the word of truth. You got to shout the gospel to people. Yeah. The gospel of your salvation. In whom? Pay attention. After that you believe, I shared the gospel with you. You believed it. And then God sealed you. Yeah. What spirit of promise? Jump back to John 14 real quick. What, 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 what spirit of promise? John 14 and 16. What? See you with the spirit of promise. What are you talking about? I will pray the Father. He shall give you another comfort that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth, the world cannot see. It sees him not. Neither know him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. That's the promise. Yeah. Ephesians said when you believe, you got the promise. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That, that's what he, I, this ain't my stuff. This is not my stuff. Jesus only promised one spirit. And he feels that I shared the gospel, which we're going to have a plan maybe Sunday morning or something. Teach you how to lead people to Christ. We'll teach the whole church how to lead people to Christ. People need to be saved. People need to be saved. People want to be saved. But they just don't want your grandmama's stuff. They tired of that junk. So that's, that's why this generation now they're not church. Because they know we're hypocrites. Right. They saw us in church and go home and beat up your wife. They saw us the deacon in church and saw you on the corner getting drunk. They saw you in the deacon at the casino. And they don't want no part of this hypocrisy. Because they've seen church for all their life. Little double life. Y'all ever like me? But I'm a preacher they have. They've seen the preacher and the deacon and the elder not live what they preach. And these young folks don't want y'all hypocrisy. And so they're standing out until they find somebody to keep me the truth. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. Y'all praying for me? Those folks got this. It's just y'all that got it. And that's why I said hope taking all y'all members. That, that's why they went to the other side of the track. Some of y'all get mad. And getting out of it. Right now you got, you got to learn from that. Stop being ignorant. Y'all ain't here like that. I'm going to I'm going to tell you. Stop being ignorant. If they want to be to a church, they don't want to be here. They're lying. They're the junk. They don't want to be able to live under this hypocrisy anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all, this is the truth now. Amen. They ain't running out of anyone. They want to be here. But the truth ain't being taught in our church. Yeah. The truth is not being taught in our church. This is the truth. And that's why they run it all the time. This dogmatic stuff going on, all this. All this craziness. Folk okay, ain't got time. There's enough problem in the world. Come on, baby. And let you beat me up every Go ahead, sir. Come on, bitch. I'm going to do that.
Stand to your feet. Y'all pray for my body. Amen. 